I had been afraid to go to the, do the Camino on my own. What if I got sick? What if I got lost? I didn't speak the language. Um, so, you know, conquering a fear like that is very empowering. I'm Margaret Lynch, and five years ago, I walked the Camino de Santiago pilgrimage in Spain to celebrate the 25-year anniversary of my cancer survival. It was a journey that changed my life. I had um, a rare form of acute leukemia, and at the time, there was no treatment for the rare form that I had. And so I had all kinds of treatment over four or five months. I was in hospital, and um, I had life-threatening infections, I had a seizure that put me in a coma, and none of the treatment worked. And then I had an experimental bone marrow transplant, which should not have worked, but it did. I was living on my own. I had a great job. I was fundraising for the hospital that had saved my life. Just a dream job. Um, I had a beautiful apartment, and I had good friends. It was a very good life. But sometimes I was lonely, so I decided to start dating. Did I mention I was 56? So um, I met some decent people, some broken people, and way more liars than I thought I would meet at that stage in life. And then of course there was a very painful breakup and I thought, ah, I just gotta do something for myself, you know? What's wrong with me here? Um, rather than waiting for somebody else, I thought time to do something for myself and by myself. So I booked my trip to Spain and uh, two months later there I was. Uh, so overnight flight, Toronto, Madrid, hopped on a bus four hours um, from Madrid to Astorga through the greenish hills of uh, northern Spain. And that first night I arrived around dinner time and I thought I need a good night's sleep. Um, booked myself into a hotel, but first I wandered through town uh, looking for Camino markers. So I woke up the next morning, uh, put on my headlamp. There was nobody else around. I felt like I was the only person awake. And I crossed the town square and headed into um, the road I knew I needed to uh, travel. Um, but there was nobody there. It was completely dark, seemed much narrower than I remembered. Um, so I was <clears throat> scared, and, um, but also excited. And I thought, I just didn't come here all this way for nothing. I didn't come here, I didn't come all this way here um, for nothing. So I put one foot in front of the other and I started walking. And, and that narrow street spilled out onto the main road leading out of town and um, an army of pilgrims absorbed me. And I just started walking and I followed, I followed the crowd. And so even on that first day, I knew it was a gift. It was a perfect blue skied day. And we walked 20 kilometers and it was perfect. And then came the rainy days. <laughs> Eight days of rain, every single day. Waking up to rain, walking in the rain. It was horrible, absolutely horrible. Um, and the only reason I got up and walked is because everybody else did. And I, I would have been, I would have looked like an idiot if I didn't. And I yelled and screamed and uh, nobody heard me because there was, you know, the winds were raging and I was climbing up hills and, slipping and I was sort of yelling and screaming at a universe about how, in, you know, an uncaring universe. Uh, you know, I've had some tough times in my life. Um, there were days where I actually made a decision to uh, stay on my own, to maybe walk an extra three kilometers to go to the next village so I could spend some time on my own and reflect on, on my life and what I was doing with it. Um, there were, you know, other than the 25 year anniversary of my cancer survival, um, there were other things that had happened in my life, not so much fun. Uh, two marriages um, with no children, so I was on my own again at 56. Uh, the first marriage took place during my cancer treatment when it seemed like I would die, kind of a love story moment, um, and it lasted six years. Um, the second marriage had ended three years before my Camino after 14 years. And that one, that was tough. I fought hard to keep that alive. I was reluctant to admit defeat. Um, and yet, when it was over, there was a, there was a big sigh of relief. Um, but I wondered, um, I wondered what would be next. Walking is, uh, you know, puts a lot of strain on joints. Um, I had walking sticks, which helped, but so physically I was tired. Mentally, I was, um, what's the right word? Proud, proud of the accomplishment, proud that I could still do that. Probably proud because of, 
of what cancer had done to my body and um, being able to reclaim my body back after, after um, that treatment. So I booked into a hotel, very impulsively, Hotel Opino, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Seriously, in the middle of nowhere. And I decided I was gonna treat myself to a single hotel room and my own bathroom. Um, and I soaked in that tub until my skin pruned. It was just the most <laughs> exquisite, luxurious thing I had done in, uh, in two weeks. And then I headed downstairs for dinner and, and I was the only single person at the table, but I did not feel alone. And then Heidi started to tell me that she, uh, she started to tell me her story about why she had done the Camino, because everybody has a reason for doing it. And she had dedicated hers to her young grandson who had been uh, recently a recipient of a bone marrow transplant. And I hesitated because I don't share my story often. But in that moment, I trusted that it was the right thing to do. And I told her. Um, and it was a healing moment for both of us because sometimes when I tell that story, people look in horror. She looked thankful. Her face softened and she looked thankful. And I know she was able to imagine, um, like she'd seen, she, she saw somebody farther down the road that her grandson was traveling and that gave her comfort. I, I knew that um, and she told me that. And for me, it was a healing moment because I got to share my story uh, with somebody and to help them, um, which helped me too. Um, and at the time, I knew that it was special. I wouldn't have been able to articulate it five years ago. Um, and that got me to thinking about the day that I'd booked my Camino two months earlier, when I'd asked myself, what's wrong with me? Um, and maybe now I had the makings of an answer. And maybe the answer was nothing at all.